So, um, Are you all set? Yep. Oh, here it comes it's still. Happening. Okay. All right. Okay. So I'm going to call the meeting to order and welcome everybody to the Cape Elizabeth School Board special business meeting on Tuesday, April 21st, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. via Zoom video conferencing. Um, it doesn't say Pledge of Allegiance here, but should we do that, Donna? Uh, I, I don't have a flag, but I could, I could uh, turn you around and look at my flag out the window if you want. <laughs> Shall we do that just for consistency? We would be doing that if we were in the space. You've got that beautiful view. There it is. Can you see the flag? Oh, yeah, yeah. right there is perfect. Okay, go All ahead. Right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that loaner, Donna. Um, so item number one, are there, first of all, thank you everyone for coming to this added special business meeting. Just a little bit of a reminder to keep your, um, your voice on mute uh, unless you're speaking. Uh, that will bring out the voices. Um, and noises in the background. And um, you can either just raise your hand. I actually find that easier. I can see everybody at once. Um, so it's a little bit easier that way. Or you could do the hand raising option that is available um, through Zoom. Uh, but thank you so much for being here. Item one, are there any adjustments to the agenda? Okay, seeing none. Um, item number two, are there any comments from the public? And I don't see any comments, so thank you. Item number three, new business. Item A is an update to FY21 unassigned fund balance. Um, and I believe that's the cue for you, John, is that correct? Sure, that'd be fine. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the invitation uh, to be part of your meeting. Uh, last week, as I was uh, reconciling account balances and tracing things through, as we get closer to the end of the year, one of the things I found is that the assessor had raised $300,000 more than was necessary to support the town and the school budget. When I trace through where that error occurred, I found that it was in the amount of taxes that were raised to support the school budget. As I further traced it through, I found that the error was caused by the revenue account in uh, the accounting system not being updated with the use of the unassigned fund balance of $300,000. That being the case, I contacted the school superintendent, the town manager, and the school business manager to let them know what I found, and that in effect, uh, the school side had $300,000 more than was necessary to support the budget for the current fiscal year. Secondly, uh, that meant there was some question raised about what was the effective tax rate to support the school budget for fiscal year 20. The tax rate was reported on the tax bills to support the schools at $14.30, although Marcy's work uh, shows it surely should have been reported as $14.35. I don't know what that five cent difference is. But given the additional 300,000, it means the net effective tax rate to support the school budget was $14.54, which was a number that Marcy uh, had picked up. 
that all being the case, what I've suggested to the uh, to the superintendent and to the uh, chair of the school board and the chair of the finance committee is that the school board uh, use uh, no more than the amount that was available at the end of last fiscal year, which was 238,000. I sat in on a special meeting with these folks. And one of the things they said was, look, if we have an additional 300,000 that we were not expecting and would not otherwise have been raised, that amount should be used towards the next school year's budget which is an absolutely reasonable thing to do. In addition, uh, some paperwork that I got from Marcy today shows a uh, suggestion of using 400,000, which would be that 300,000 raised erroneously, plus 100,000 that was available at the end of last fiscal year. Uh, this was a mistake made in the assessing department. It was not something that reflected upon the school budget as it was presented or as it was adopted. It's also a problem with the internal financial accounting system we're using, Northern Data System, and the failure of the uh, school business manager last year to fully populate all of the revenue accounts. So that's where we are and that's what I brought forward to the uh, school board and to the superintendent of schools. If anyone has any questions, I will answer that if I can. Uh, John, first of all, thank you for that very clear explanation. Elizabeth. Um, I just wanted to make sure that um, for members of the public, we didn't make a great introduction. Um, this is our town finance director, John, Quattararo. We never say your whole name, but <laughs> <laughs> you did fine. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I just wanted everybody to know who you are and um, to thank you and Marcy for, you know, taking this very deep, careful look at the town and school finances. Um, I understand that it was sort of the perfect storm with Marcy being a brand new business manager at the beginning of this fiscal year, you being brand new in your role at the beginning at the very same time and so um we are grateful that that you found this anomaly and are um bringing it to us so that you know we as we take another hard look at our budget um you know we can hopefully find we've found a way to lower our tax impact so we really appreciate it thank you john you're certainly welcome If there's nothing else for me, I think I'm done. I think Kimberly might have a question, John. Go ahead, Kimberly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I just wondered, is this something that we would um, anticipate the auditors would pick up on or? Um, yes, <laughs> absolutely. And if I find it before the auditors, yay for us. So this was this they had not looked at this yet. So this, this no, because the fiscal year does not end until June thirtieth. They won't be in to do the audit until August. Got it. Got it. Thank you. Thank You're you welcome. for finding it, and I appreciate both of uh, both of your hard work on this one. Thank you. Anything else for John before he leaves? And we still have Marcy around if other if if other conversations come up, she's very aware and knowledgeable of the situation as well. So um, okay, seeing no questions. Thank you so much, John, for taking the time and being here. Thank, Thank you very you, much. John. Have a good meeting. Thank you. Um okay. Looks like we're ready to move on to item B, which is a motion. Um, if we are, um, so is there somebody who can 
sorry, there was just a big wind outside my window that caught my attention. Uh, is there somebody who can make a motion, please? I move that the 2020-2021 school budget for the town of Cape Elizabeth be approved in the total amount of $28,490,012. I Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Laura. Uh, discussion. I'm going to start with Phil. And then I saw you, Elizabeth, I'll, I'll call on you next. Yeah, sure. This was just a, <clears throat> I guess it was a follow up question. Um, but it's appropriate to talk about it now just to summarize for people who are listening what the impact of what we just heard meant. And I just pulled up, uh, we have a sheet that's part of our packet tonight and and we had one last meeting where we approved it. And, and please, someone correct me if I'm misinterpreting as mercy, maybe. As of the last version of the budget, um, the tax impact would have been 6.27%. Is that right? And then now with with this new information, the tax impact of our budget is actually, it went down to 4.13%. Am I reading that correctly? So that's a, so that's a significant uh, drop in the tax impact of of this budget. And um, I just want to make sure that information was, was out there. That's it for now. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, Elizabeth, thank you for that, Phil, for that clarity. Uh, oh. Elizabeth. Phil's reading my mind. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, I was going to uh, ask for Marcy or anybody to highlight that. It is, it's a significant savings um, on the tax impact. It's quite interesting. And um, for anybody that has this document, it should be also posted with this um, meeting. If you look back over the years, it seems to be very uh, volatile. And sometimes it's hard to understand what the difference is between spending increase and tax impact. And they are two very different numbers um, that have a lot to do with um, not just expenditures, but revenues. So if you go back to 2018, 2019, you'll see that we have a spending increase of 2.1%, but we have a tax impact of 8.1%. And then you'll notice that was one of the years that we lost nearly a million dollars in state subsidy. So there's your aha moment of, of, one of one of the major factors that plays into the relationship of those two things. And um, while I believe that we do have to pay attention to our spending increase, it's not just something that we um, let just fly over a cliff. The number that really has meaning to our community members, to our neighbors, is the number highlighted in green, which is the tax impact. And that's why I'm, I'm so delighted that Marcy and John have, have worked so hard to, to you know, find these funds to make sure that we are able to bring this budget to our community at essentially 4.1% tax impact, which is a huge difference. I just want to get that out there. Yes, Hope. Can't hear you yet. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, so I know we're not um, you know, we're just talking about this change with respect to the budget, but I wanted to just bring up again, um, sort of reiterate what I had said when we approved the budget earlier, and that is um, we're sort of in this middle ground between the past and the future and what happened before we all left the school buildings and we still don't really know what things are going to look like in the fall. So I just kind of want to address the, the elephant in the room, which is this budget could be woefully too low. It could be not what, you know, we could have a lot of needs that we can't even predict right now. We don't know what, what things will look like. Um, and at the same time, we might not have the, the money there and the, the money might not be in the taxpayer's pockets. It might not come from the state. We might not have the town revenue. So there's a lot of different things that will change between now and, and the fall or in the coming year. Um, and 
I know we've had some communication from the public about, you know, the, what we're doing with the budget and my, I just want um, to sort of put out there that we, we don't know what, what's going to be happening in the next six months to a year. And I think to make, um, make decisions now based on what we think might happen is really, you know, it's impossible and I don't think it's prudent or in anyone's interest. Um, I mean, like an analogy would be, um, you know, if you lost your income right now, uh, your first instinct is to cut your costs, but you wouldn't sell your car because you know you're going to need it if you when you find your new job. So you can't. Um, I don't think I, I don't want to sort of. Um, I just want to make sure we whatever we do, it's done with lots of careful planning and forethought. Uh, and the idea that we would simply. Um, you know, make drastic cuts to the budget or or even go to a flat budget would, would entail cuts um, is really sort of not taking into account any aspect of what the any of the planning that went into this budget or anything about um, you know the the um, the budget that we've presented. So I just wanted to raise that and sort of address it that I, I think we're all cognizant of the issue, but it's just it we're unfortunate in the timing of this that we have no way to address it all today, but um, it is what it is and we'll just have to, um, you know, address it as it comes up. Thank you for that, Hope. Thank you. I also, just to add on to that, I think we went through a very thorough process to to come up with this the, this current budget that we believe is fiscally responsible because the seven of us did vote on it. Um, and I think your point to that hope is that it sounds like you're saying you still believe in the budget and that you don't want to have a reactionary. She's shaking her head yes for just the audio confirmation um, that that you don't want to be to the situation that you still believe that this budget is fiscally responsible as it is. And we're fortunate to have this situation where we can lower the tax impact based on the discoveries um, through Marcy and John. So thank you for sharing those thoughts. I think it is, um, I know I've been spending some time revisiting the budget and being assured that I still believe in what we voted on. Um, and, and I appreciate Hope coming up and, and making that declaration for herself. Um, so anybody else, any other board members? Yes, Kimberly. <laughs> Sorry, yep. I put my hand up a while ago, but I, I should just use my, oh. my human hand. <laughs> yeah, sorry, um, I don't see it. No, that's okay. I just took it down. Um, I um, uh, two things. I I am um, in full agreement with that. Hope I think um, I think you know it, it's um, it's so uncertain what's going to happen at the state level. What our funding from the state is going to look like. Um, I don't want to. Um, have a knee-jerk reaction right now, and um, and then end up, you know, with a, an even um, weaker budget. Um, you know, if, if we lose funding from the state, um, I think uh, the administrators and the superintendent um, they worked really hard um, on this budget, and I think we all um, have asked a lot of questions, looked very thoroughly at it, and. Um, feel confident in it and uh, and feel like it's a conservative budget as it is. Um, and I also, I just wanted to check, Elizabeth, that 4.13%, that is not the actual number that ends up going to the um, town, uh, to the taxpayers. Is that correct? I feel like it's often decreased. I, uh, my understanding is that um, it, the local assessment plays a role and also anytime that we use these uh, numbers, it's based on the, act, the median home and not anybody's actual home. And so this is really a projection and it's the, the closest projection that we can get. Thank you. Marcy, I hope I did you proud. Is that correct? You did. You did, Elizabeth. Okay. Very proud. <laughs> Hi.
I actually had a few questions, just if I may. Mm -hmm. So I, first of all, want to acknowledge that um, although we have had um, a few emails from the community coming in um, within the last day or two, um, and I like to acknowledge that people are, are um, taking time to reach out either to town council or to the school board or the superintendent to share their feelings about the budget. Number one, I urge people to um, get fully informed before um, making um, re or having reactions and making suggestions. Um, and I also would like to just reiterate a little bit about uh, what Hope is speaking about because I think she was um, being kind of careful in her language. And what I, I want to be a little more plain about is that we have students that are struggling. Um, not everybody is thriving with distance learning. And we don't know what students are going to need in the fall. And so, you know, to be very plain, we could be facing much greater needs than we have been able to budget for and project. And so to her point, this may not be even close to an adequate budget because we don't know this is the best budget that we could come up with at the time. And um, just to kind of quickly, I mean, if you look, people probably remember, I'm going to, people have this document, um, which is FY 2020-2021 budget changes um, that was updated on the 7th of April. It shows, um, a large number of um, position and program and project cuts that came out of earlier proposals. And then at the bottom, the bottom third are the things that we are able to keep in the budget that we feel strongly about that are essential, that are completely enrollment driven or need driven. And um, I was hoping that sort of our experts would just kind of reiterate for the public tonight, looking at that list a little bit. Um, I, can, you know, I obviously can't speak to the facilities, the, the custodian for the schools that, uh, the way that Perry can, but we've heard about it for years and years. And I can only imagine that going forward with the deep sanitation that's going on and will have to go on if we are ever to get back into school I, I imagine that our custodians will have a greater need. Um, those are the sorts of things I think Jeff can speak to the fact that we were um, staffed for a certain number. I think it was 511 this year and that we actually have closer to 540 students this year in that neighborhood. We've, we've got about, this year we have about five, I, I'm not sure it's, mid 530s next year we're going to be mid 550s that's right. the real problem right so i mean the reason i bring it up is just that we are already kind of chasing our um class sizes they're already oversized and so this budget that includes you know not even two full time positions basically that are new it, it's you know we're chasing we're we're barely making up so I guess I would, I would love, uh, we do have um, another, just I feel like this is one more opportunity to speak to the public and talk about why these positions are in there, why we need them. And I was hoping Donna and Jeff and anybody else would be willing to just do a little of that for us. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Elizabeth. Donna. Uh, so I spent um, a little more time today um, just going back over enrollment projections because I know there were some concerns about um, enrollment going down, but we have, uh, we have pockets of increases, pockets of decreases, different needs at different schools. Um, I did a student to student uh, sort of comparison and next year we'll, we will be up 28 students at the high school over um, and th that's without getting any new enrollments, which we always do. Last year, we, we had quite a few new enrollments over the summer. But we'll be up 28 students over uh, next year over what we had this year. And this year, we uh, had an enrollment increase. And um, if 
uh, anybody out there has been in some of the high school classes, uh, we have some very large high school classes. Um, looking at the number of um, new staff, uh, new teachers that we ended up with uh, in this uh, proposed budget, um, it really comes up, comes down to a 1.75 FTE increase um, at the high school. And for 28 students, that is about correct. Uh, we're going to be down a, about 45 students at the middle school. And in fact, we did cut a position at the middle school to address that decrease in enrollment. Pond Cove, um, it looks like we'll be down 19 for next year, although we usually get a large influx in the summer of um, new and newly enrolled students. However, if you take those, ni if, those nine, if those 19 students were all in the same class, uh, we could eliminate a teacher. However, we have 19 students spread across, I don't know how many, uh, 60 or so uh, classrooms. Um, so it turns into um, uh, a situation where we do need an extra classroom teacher. We have a larger fourth grade class coming up than we have at present, and we do need to add a teacher uh, for, to teach that classroom of students. Um, if we don't address these needs, we will be over uh, at the high school and at Pond Cove, we will be um, over what our guidelines are in our policy for enrollment. And um, we've had many discussions on that and, and take that very seriously. So as far as our enrollment goes, um, again, I spent several hours going over that again today. We do have an ed tech that by law we have to hire um, to fill a special needs position. We don't have any choice about that. Uh, that's, that's a legal issue. Um, so uh, that's, that's a, a little insight into um, our needs for next year. Thank you for that clarity, Donna. Um, does anybody, Donna, you might have this info or Elizabeth and maybe it's, but you said it's a 1.75 teacher increase in the high school. Yes. Do we remember, I could go back and look in my binder, but the overall teacher increase with that ed tech, do you have that available just out of curiosity? Uh, district wide, are you talking? Yes. Okay, so district wide for teachers, um, it's a 3.75 uh, FTE increase. Um, that doesn't include the ed tech. We had, uh, again, one ed tech upon COBE, and we have a 0.5 um, ed tech uh, support person in the library at the high school. Um, Donna, mm -hmm. does that take into account the fact that we are eliminating the, um, the current position that, that deals with ELO and volunteer coordination? So it's basically a net exchange that we are moving. It, yeah, it's, it's a net exchange. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, in that instance, we're really not adding anything. It's a paint exchange. Well, well, we did, you'll remember our conversation for last time, we did have a, um, an ELA slash literacy slash um, elective teacher. And that was the exchange for the uh, ELO teacher. So we did, we eliminated that combination um, from the budget to put back in the ELO teacher. So that yep. was, that was a wash. Yes. Yep. Any other comments or questions? Regarding I don't know if, if Jeff is willing to just, I, he's talked about it a lot. <laughs> But I never think that it's too much to talk about um, the size of certain classes that are um, going on in the high school already this year and the need that already exists and, and why, you know, we have like a 0.6 math teacher, 0.75 science teacher, that sort of thing, um, taking into account the projected enrollment for next year. So, yeah, I mean, I mean I'm, let me try to do it concisely, but, but I want to step back to last year. Last year, the high school eliminated uh, the equivalent of 
it was about 1.2 teachers between the elimination of our Latin program and the elimination of a math teacher, part-time math teacher position. And that was in anticipation of a uh, reduction in our student population that because of an influx of students this past summer that we didn't expect, the, the decline in student population that we had projected didn't happen. So we, we had cut our teaching staff, but had no cut in student population. So last year we staffed for a projected 511. For next year, I'm anticipating we'll have a projected 553, uh, which is an, a net increase of in the low 40s. Um, so that's where the additional teachers come in. And if I don't get those additional part-time positions in French and science and math, um, all of the teach, well, most if not all of the teachers, I could do the precise calculation um, without an increase in the staffing that's proposed in the budget would be over the school board guidelines in, in terms of student load per teacher. Um, so class sizes would increase, student loads would increase, and, and there would be an impact on, on rigor of what we'd be able to offer as well. And I would just, just to simplify the ELO thing, it got complicated in the, in the making of the, the, the making of the donuts. Uh, but the reality is we had a full-time position before in the high school. Um, we have, and in this coming year's budget, we will have another full-time position as well. So it's really no increase related to ELO. It's, there's a, been a slight tweak to the job responsibilities to try to provide for some expansion of the of the number of students served in the position, but from a budgetary standpoint, there's no difference. Thank you, Jeff. Donna. We also have a custodian in the budget, which is a town custodian, but um, because uh, the town reimburses us and the school district uh, pays for the custodians, we have to have that in our expenditure budget, but really it's a town custodian position. So that is one of the new custodial positions. Yeah, I think that people probably, not everybody probably understands the one town concept and having been on the board for almost nine years, I still don't quite understand it all, but, um, so all the custodians in town are hired by the school department, whether they work in a town building or a school building or split their time among those buildings. And um, if, if people um, want to, they can go and look at the list of what is included in this budget. And as Donna says, there's one facilities custodian that is being hired just for town uh, purposes which is um, in our expenditure budget, it, it, it kind of, it counts towards our expenditure budget, even though the town reimburses us. So that goes into revenues. So having a discussion about that um, expenditure number or percentage um, isn't always as relevant when you have some of these really kind of funny costs in there. Um, because that that reimbursement really takes effect when you look at the um, tax impact. Mm -hmm. Any other comments, questions? Okay. I just want to make sure that everybody has a chance to speak. If I think if Nasser, they want to, but it's looking like is Nasser raising his hand? Thank you. I didn't see yeah, that. Uh, Thank you, Nasser. Hi, Elizabeth. Yeah, it's just a um, reminder for the public and for all of us. Uh, yes, we indeed we worked on the budget um, thoroughly and hard, and no, we did not accept everything that was possible that was requested by the administration, we had to reject things. And still we are, um, uh, all of our, us have a heart in the Achievement Center, and yet we may not have a staff for that, especially after the 
pandemic. So just for the public and for all of us, that we work hard on this, and it's not basically bells and whistles. Um, we have to tune it, tune it down to to meet the uh, the public needs. So I just want to reiterate that for all of us. Thank you, Nasser. And my apologies, I didn't see the hand raised. Anybody else? I don't see virtual hands and I don't see real hands. So um, we're ready to vote. Um, I just want to remind everybody that the way this has to work is um, I need the verbal yay or nay, and so I have to go through the entire board. And um, a reminder that the motion is to approve the 2021 school budget for the town of Cape Elizabeth in the total amount of uh, my glasses on. Twenty-eight million four hundred ninety thousand and twelve dollars. Is that correct? Am I reading? Yes. Thank you. Um, and so Heather Altenberg is a yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Kimberly Carr is a yay. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Phil Saucier. Yay. Elizabeth Seifrey. Yay. Nasser Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Thank you. Um, I would just, well, I guess I can't say anything. Discussion is over, but I'm glad that we got to have that further conversation and revisit it. It was a gift in many ways. Item C. May I have a motion? I move that the 2020-2021 notice of school budget adopted by town council and submitted to budget validation referendum be approved and that the following council approval of the school budget, the superintendent be authorized to complete, execute and deliver that notice to the town clerk for use at the budget validation referendum. And may I have a... I second that. Thank you. Uh, any discussion? Um, I think the note in our agenda pretty much explains it that um, the above motion is to give the superintendent authorization to complete the notice the school board approved by for posting at the polls once the town council votes on the school budget. So it's just logistics and um, process, mm -hmm. something we have to go through to continue on. Is that correct, Donna? We can't hear you. It's legally required. Legally required. All right, that's all we needed to know, I believe. So um, Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr? Yay. Uh, Phil Saucier? Yay. Elizabeth Seifries? Yay. Nasser Shear? Yay. Hope Straw? Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. Okay, thank you. Uh, this one's a little bit bigger. Uh, may I have a motion for item D? I move we approve the additional local funds article for the 2021 school budget for the town of Cape Elizabeth be approved for the purpose of raising $9,996,516 in additional local funds for the school budget which exceeds the state's essential program and services allocation model by the same amount, that the statements of reasons for exceeding that model be approved as set forth below. Do you, so should I read the whole thing? Or can I say as defined in our packet? Just read it? Yeah. I think it's worth Keep going, reading. we'll keep going. Yeah. And that the superintendent be authorized to prepare and deliver that article to the council for approval. School board statement of reasons for exceeding essential programs and services allocation model is as follows. The state's funding model does not support all of the costs for K through 12 education. It includes only those costs considered essential by the state's essential programs 
and Services EPS model. Okay. Thank I you, Laura. May I have a second? Yep, I second that. Kimberly? Uh, and discussion. Again, Donna, can you just speak to it quickly? Uh, this is also legally required when um, a, dis a school district, um, a town, spends over the EPS funding formula. So, and there are many things that funding formula doesn't fund in a, in a district. Um, so that is, again, a legal, legal requirement. Okay, any more discussion or questions? Okay. Heather Almer, yay. Kimberly Carr. Yay. Thank you. Phil Sussi. Yay. Did you get me? Yay for me. Thank thank you. Uh, Elizabeth Cyphers. Yay. I got you, Phil. Uh, thank you, Elizabeth. Uh, Nasa Shear. Yay. Hope Straw. Thank you, Nasser. Yay. And Laura Danino. Yay. And a final motion. I move we adjourn. I have a second. I second that. Uh, any discussion? I would just like to remind everybody that on Monday night, um, I will be presenting our budget to town council and it is tradition that the full school board attends and support. So I hope to see everybody Monday night. And again, thank you for coming to this special business meeting tonight. That was not originally on the schedule. Yes, Donna? Phil has his hand up. Oh, just thank very you. briefly, I just wanted to thank uh, all the teachers and administrators in this time period. We've certainly seen uh, amazing work in our family uh, with our teacher. And specifically, I just since he's here, I thank Mr. Mangerides for the uh, Pond Cove read aloud that he, he and some other teachers and administrators are doing. We're, we're following where the mountain meets the moon uh, here in our family. And it's uh, really appreciated. My son loves it. So I just want to I just want to thank you for that. Oh, <laughs> okay, so now the vote. Heather Altenberg, yay. Kimberly Carr, yay. Phil Saucier, yay. Elizabeth Seifries, yay. Nasser Sear, yay. <laughs> Hope Straw, yay. And Laura Danino, yay. Okay, have a good night, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, good night. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Piper. Bye. Bye, Allie. Thank you for being here. Bye, everyone. Bye.